Hey folks, it's Lindsay Setchell here from HM and the HM International School of Horse and Hoof Care and we're carrying on with these video lessons. A lot of you are requesting them, so why not? Let's carry on. The last couple of lessons we talked about why HM don't chop off the toes. That's what we started with. We started why we don't uh, started explaining why we don't chop off the toes. Then why we don't raise the heels and why it's a really bad idea to do that. We explained that and we explained the knock-on effect to the DDFT but how the DDFT doesn't pull P3. We know that, right? That's not what we do for all of the reasons that I've explained in the last two videos. And if you haven't seen those, I suggest you go back on the HM page and find them. So I wanted to then talk to you more about rotation. Well, we've told you why it rotates here in those videos. We're telling you why P3 rotates when you have laminitis. And that's because of the hoof capsule being articulated and that P3 is still attached within that hoof capsule, even though they're saying that the lamina is separating, which it is, but they're saying that that is causing P3 to move, but it isn't. It's the hoof capsule that is moving. And we explain that by the fact that they raise the heels and the fact that they chop off the toes, but this somehow seems to have forgotten a couple of other things. So let's talk about rotation and let's talk about some other forms of rotation. Now, I don't know about you, but, but, but the word rotation is a pretty bad word, right? Because rotation sort of to me and to most people I talk to, to means that they think it's rotating. Things rotate, don't they, around a circle? That's, that's kind of what you think rotation is. But in actual fact, what we're talking about is articulation. Um, a positive articulation or a negative articulation, but they gave it the term rotation. And when anybody hears this word, hears this rotation word, they, they start to freak out. They start to, okay, my, my horse has got rotated pedal bones, that's it, I'm out. And there's various degrees of rotation. And I have to say, depending on the, uh, the person who is looking at the x-rays, you can have two different people looking at the x-rays and one will say that it's more rotated and the other will say it isn't. And they're measuring from the hoof wall to the dorsal surface of P3. But depending on where the hoof capsule is will depend on whether there is true rotation in the bony column or not, or whether they're just measuring the separation. But maybe that's for another lecture. OK, so we're talking about we are talking about this big word. Let's use their word rotation. So there are three things I want to talk to you about. One is the laminitic foot. So here we are, we've got the laminitic foot and they are, and then in that laminitic foot, we have got rotation. Now we talked about the fact that it can't possibly be just losing, because it's losing the attachment to its lamina, it can't possibly be going that way or being pulled by the DDFT because the point of the frog is still in exactly the same place. And, the, and, and when this is going that way, this doesn't keep going, that point of the frog doesn't keep going that way. And yet these are connected together. And we told you uh, in the last couple of lessons that the reason for this is because we've got these very high heels. And what actually needs to be done here is that you need, let's just take DDFT out of the way, what this foot needs, and that arrow there, what this foot needs, and that those are the palmar processes. So, so on an x-ray you see it kind of like that, but you, these are the palmar processes that you see. So what this foot actually needs is this. And as it starts to grow in, that's the foot that that horse will eventually get. So when we have recovering laminitics, and maybe I'll do another one on that, on, on what, on the stages of recovery uh, as a laminitic is recovering uh, with the trim, how we go through it at each stage by stage by stage. Drop a comment below if you want me to talk about that. But at the end result, this is what you have. You have, you have more material down here and you have the, the, the hoof capsule goes back to where it should be and then the bony column is all in alignment. So that's great. So that's the first one. So this is laminitis. 
okay? Now I want to talk to you about something else. I want to talk to you about an NPA. So this is a negative palmar angle or a negative plantar angle, depending whether we're talking about front or back, plantar being the back, palmar being the front. But to be honest with you, it's fairly interchangeable these days. And most people tend to just call them negative palmar angles and then they they're just whatever. But if you want to be completely correct, call it a negative plantar angle. Now this pedal bone down here is positive. It's hyper positive. It's gone too far that way. But with an NPA, and it's usually on back feet, what we have is we have a pedal bone that is going the other way. It's going, it's negative. That's why it's called a negative palmar or plantar angle. It's got a negative angle. And if we draw the foot in like this, then you can see here that it is definitely more space there than there is here. So this is where P3 is in a negative palmar angle. Now, here's the interesting thing. When they look at x-rays like this, they, they go, okay, we've got an MPA here. And most will agree that that is a trimming issue, most. And what, but, but what they tend to do is go, aha, uh -huh, the heels are far too low. Rather than going, well, in actual fact, this is what should be happening. This here is actually what the horse's foot should be. And that, in fact, all of this here is too much. Now, Lindsay, you said you don't chop off the toes. No, we don't. We're leaving plenty of toe here because we're eyeballing from the heels, which is what it should be, is like this. That is the, the capsule that it should have. And so this is all about balance. It's all about understanding balance. But they don't go and put a horse down for that. They don't go, you're going to be put to sleep because you're in a negative palmar angle and we're never going to get that back. No talk about lamina at this point. No talk about separating lamina or anything. So now what we have is we know how to correct that quite easily and, and oftentimes you can correct that in one trim or two trims, depending on whether the heels have been taken down too far. Usually they haven't. It's usually that there's too much mass at the toe. So you can correct it quite easily. But instead of that, what happens is, instead of that easy correction, what they do with shoe, oh, hello. What they do with shoeing packages is that they go, aha. Now, in order to make that more positive, we need to put a wedge in. So what we will do is we will put a wedge in here. So we will raise the heels and that will put P3 in a more positive position. That should make you think, hang on a minute. So you do know that if you are, uh, manipulate the capsule, you can change the angle of P3. You do know that. And yet when we're over here on this one, you're going, hang on a minute. No, 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 no. This is all about the lamina. It can't possibly be about the hoof capsule. And we're coming along going, well, yes, it is. Because the heels are too high. Conversely, in this one, either the heels are too low, which is actually the rare thing, or there's just too much material at the toe. Again, if you want me to go into any of this in greater detail, just let me know. Then there's a third thing we need to think about, and this is the club foot. Let me just bring that away here. I don't know if I've got enough room to put that in here. Shall we just, shall we just, let's see if what we can do here. So we got the, 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 we got the pastern coming down like this, but then the hoof moves and changes. And then you sort of end up with this foot that looks a bit like that with almost a complete straight coronary band, which is the red flag. Immediately you're like, ah, ha, ha. if the coronary band is really straight and it's not going down like this, because it can't possibly go down like that because it's all attached to the bony column inside and the coronary band is showing you that P3, without even looking at an x-ray, P3 is in a not a very good position. So, what do we have here? Well, we have, we have uh, the long pastern coming down like this. Here's the long pastern. And then we have the short pastern.
coming in here and then we have P3 doing this. Really, really positive. So you can see it's not in alignment anymore because the horse is clubbing its foot. Now you talk to anybody about this and they all know that the reason that that is like that is because the heels are too high. We all know that. But what you can't do is you can't go around to a club foot and start just removing all the heels straight away. You have to change the diet and the management. You have to then for get all the NHHC, the natural horse and hoof care guidelines all sorted out. You've got the diet, the management and the trim all together. Lots of movement. Anyway, we can talk about that another time. But there you can help improve club feet on horses by doing far better practices in the way you keep your horse and the way the horse is trimmed. But irrelevant of all that, what we've got here is we have a very positive angle of P3. Here we have a positive angle of P3 and here we had a negative angle. And with these two here, they know, and I say they, meaning the equine world, that the hoof capsule, which is attached to P3 here, is causing those bones to rotate. Yet with this one, even though all the landmarks are still in the same spot, boop, point of P3, all still in the same spot, yet with this one, they go, oh, no, 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 no. It can't possibly do that, it's the lamina. It isn't, it's the trim articulating the hoof capsule in such a way that it's causing rotation. Now that is quite profound because what does that mean? It means that there have been millions of horses put to sleep across the world and are still being put to sleep across the world by well-meaning people who want to do the best for the horse, who have completely lost sight of the anatomy of a hoof and who believe that this is something completely different to this because we have lamina stretching. And yet we can come along every single time a horse is in this situation and they have not got any osteonecrosis where the bone has gone, that where we've got bone loss. We can come along in every single situation, even when we have penetration here, and we can Lower the heels because this is where you need to go. You're not going to do it in one foul sweep because that's not what's going to happen. It's bit by bit. The heels get lower and lower bit by bit. But when you do that, you end up going like that. This ends up being stuck up in the air. But gradually, gradually, you start to get more material under here. And this starts to go into a better position because you're putting the capsule back to where it should be and the horse starts to get sounder and sounder and sounder. And okay, it's, it's, it doesn't look pretty. We've got an ugly foot coming down, but that's okay. We need to embrace those ugly feet, folks, because those ugly feet are healing. Those ugly feet are healing. And when you start doing this gradually, gradually over time, as that healing angle grows out, what you end up with is a foot like that. That is what you end up with. Boop. You just have to leave this alone and let it grow more material at the toe, which is actually what it needs. So we have three examples of rotation. Two of them, they will admit, is to do with capsular rotation. The other one, they lose their heads over and say it's all about the lamina. And yet, and yet, the point of the frog is always where it should be. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want me to do more uh, lessons about the foot, just drop a comment below. See you again. Bye-bye.